You know what's gonna be really fun to build after I build this? The box this lives in, uh-huh. Hello everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a one day build I've been excited about for a little while. Um, like all of you, I have found a lot of succor uh, in the last few months watching television, watching movies on my television, watching television shows. And one of the shows that I uh, was a late convert to because I just didn't give it a shot was The Crown. And I loved all four seasons of The Crown that I watched. I mean, that's all that's out so far. Um, and it hearkened me back to visiting the set of the San Francisco production of Hamilton uh, earlier this year, actually late in 2019, I believe. Yeah. Um, when I was able to witness their, uh, their, their British crown that they have for King George III, um, and I coveted the object back when I saw it backstage at, at Hamilton, but watching The Crown and watching actually Claire Foy go through a whole narrative process of like practicing wearing the crown, that it weighs like five and a half pounds and that the weight of the real thing is actually pretty close to the weight of the one that's in Hamilton and they are really, really heavy. Anyway, all this is a long way of saying I really wanted a crown. I wanted to make a crown and I decided to try everything from Amazon. So I spent a few hours uh, compiling a list of all the things that I might need and they're all here. And uh, I am going to attempt to make a reasonable replica of the British Windsor crown today. Okay, uh, so first up, I need a template. Um, I've, got, I've got a bunch of reference material for the crown here that I've printed out. Um, it's a pretty straightforward construction. There is a ring that goes around the head. There are uh, four uh, Maltese crosses, I guess, plus one on the top. There's an orb. The orb was the one thing I got the wrong size of, so I'm going to use a, a, a stainless steel ball that I had in my collection. It's the only piece I'm pulling out. Um, funnily enough, uh, the the color of the of the velvet here goes back and forth between purple and red, depending on the replica you're looking at. But it's purple and the real thing. So I got some purple velvet. Uh, I got some brass plate. Uh, for working out the template for cutting out. Uh, and then I got tons and tons and tons of jewels. Yeah, this, this, I'm, I'm psyched about this build. This is going to be really, really fun. <laughs> yeah, the fake ermine was weirdly difficult to procure, but I found this scarf. Yes, it's mm, fabulous. So it looks like the width of the main bar that goes across is just about the thickness of my glasses here. So I'm going to go with that. I'm measuring off this drawing and I'm just going to This is the main one, and it needs to be padded so that it goes around my head. And then there, yeah, I'm gonna give it some extra room. I like that. Oh, that's actually a little, not quite enough. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Yeah. All right, let's see. Yeah, maybe a little. No, that's definitely too tight. Yeah, I gotta go. Okay, I think that's it. Okay. So that's gonna be the main body. And then I need this business that comes up here. Yep, yep, yep. It's gonna be cutting out a lot of. Uh, brass strip. Right. 
much easier. This is gonna be a bunch of mocking up to get this going. Okay, so I have a really nice profile here and I can follow that. Um, so if this, let's see if that's that size. Oh, this is bigger, it is bigger. I am going to do a thing. I'm going to print this up full size. Then I don't have to do any extrapolation. It's almost a full head on shot straight on. I've got some parallaxing down towards the bottom, but not so much that it should affect me. So I'm gonna do uh, just a little Photoshop and print this out as a full size template. And that should take care of a lot of my size problems. I think. Yeah, that's actually an interesting question. How uh, will this make it? No, it won't. It's gonna be just a little bit more. So I think I could. I'm gonna do all the sanding down of this later because The first solder is away. Okay. Right, because it was super annealed, so it bent right at the spot I heated it at. Um, so now the question is, yep, it's not quite enough. So this is the last one, is that correct? Yep, okay, so. Good enough. <laughs> Let's go get this underwater. So, this is about this size. It's gonna look rough until it doesn't look rough. That's one of the things about this build. It's so handy to have a model of my head. So handy indeed. Okay, so I think it's roughly there. I'm gonna make it first cut. Right, the bend going. Not the most beautiful, but I think I can cover it over. Let's uh, let's do that. Let's just. Get 
that going. Wonderful, wonderful. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it doesn't need to be. Okay, so now, actually, you know what? No, I need to make a template for this. That's what I need to do. Right. Yes, that's it. Okay, so, great. I'm being dumb, I'm being ridiculous, this is silly. I actually don't need to go this, sorry. There's a simpler way. 26 inches, 25 and 7 eighths, 25 and 7 eighths. So, um, this is 12, 12. I will do the same thing we did before. Flux and flux. And... I'm not doing a lot of stopping and explaining what I'm doing, but it's also because I don't really know what I'm doing. I mean, that's just a fact. So, um, I mean, the soldering, it's, this is something that I'm somewhat used to, you know, hot, hot metal <laughs> flux and uh, the, the, the soldering compound, the soldering material, you know, the bronze, um, certainly. But yeah, it's, um, you know, I know there are probably best practices that I should know about, but I don't. Okay, so yeah. Oh, hey, don't you drift on me. So I've got these fleur de lis, which are almost exactly the right size of the fleur de lis on the crown itself. They're Christmas ornaments, but no longer. See, here we are. There's the fleur de lis, and there's the fleur de lis. Look at this, pretty close. Uh, so I'll be attaching this to the top of that business. And what we'll do is I'm gonna cut this. All right, gonna break out a small bandsaw blade and make these scallop cuts all the way around this. Okay, now I'm gonna cut four crosses out. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna cut five because I want to be, I want an extra one. one block that's what I need that's not bad actually that's pretty good I'm actually kind of pleased with that so we're going to continue doing that I'm going to do these four yeah let's get some water on those Ah, oh, that's great. I'm just gonna, yep, that's gonna be awesome. Okay, so now it's time to attach this to this. And this is, 
And I'm gonna get this a little bit more. That's kind of awesome, right? Just kind of going in and stitching this in is what I'm doing here. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do with that? I'm gonna do this better. Okay. Now, now it's time for the bend. It's time for the bend. And the bend is like this. Right, it comes out. It comes out. Very top of the, yeah. Great. Okay, so it does this. It does. Yeah, it comes. Oh, it's a steep bend. Uh huh. Way too tall, way too tall. From here. To there. I know, this, bit, this build is a bit of a mess. I get that, I'm totally there with you. Um, but <laughs> I love that I've got this sort of like sheet metal version of a crown that's coming together here. Uh, but it's all just too, I'm going too large. I need to go smaller. Yeah, I need to go more like this. Yeah, even smaller. I'm uh, this is one of those ones where way more like as I'm going through these bends I'm just trying to be even about how I address them so I don't get any 
I'm, you know, I'm going slowly. I know it doesn't look like I'm going slowly. I know it looks like I'm working like a crazy man, because I kind of am. Okay, let's see here. That's dead on, and so is that, and that's great. And actually all four of these meet in this perfect center. That's really lovely. Okay, so. <laughs> this is, I always laugh when the thing I'm making starts to look like the thing that I'm making. It is always such a freaking magical moment. Damn, look at that. That's, I mean, that's just cool. Okay, so we're gonna secure this in the middle. Ah, right, first, let's get some, get some of that going on. All right, I'm uh, I'm washing my crown. I'm washing my crown, and I I you know I don't have the proper pickle, uh, which is the acid for removing all this uh, solder flux from the brass. I may have to go make it, but um, I'm trying to clean it first. This is uh, unfamiliar territory for me. I really want to get this to a obviously bright shine. Oh, I clearly have a lot of elbow grease in front of me. Here is the brass parts mostly done. I know it doesn't look like a whole hell of a lot right now. I know it looks pretty crunchy, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be amazing. All right. Ooh, it is a new day. And I have a little bit more engineering to do, and then we get to do the fun stuff, which is the hiding of the crimes. I specifically mean the ways in which you can cut corners early in a build where said corners will get hidden. What happens when you cut a corner? It's not a sharp corner, right? That's like the literal definition. So hiding crimes means Later on in the build, after I've cut a corner and it's not sharp, I do a thing that makes it look like it's a sharp corner. Yeah. So I've uh, roughed out my crown in brass and I've used some stuff I kind of know, some soldering, some brazing, some tools. Uh, but <clears throat> the fact is I didn't have to make it out of brass. I certainly could have made this out of uh, any plastic. If I had to... Um, if I had to do this for a theater project where I needed it to be light, uh, it, this is definitely, this is 20 thou brass. It's pretty bendable, which means it's not quite as durable, right? It's gonna take that bend. Um, if I wanted to make this for like a theater touring show, I might do this out of a thicker brass. That makes it heavier. Or I might use something like an eighth inch Kydex. Um, something that, 
Kydex is a thermoplastic, but it's not like styrene because it has a wider working range. Um, it's a little more similar to Warbler. Uh, this is absolutely a pattern that could be cut out on a laser cutter uh, and laser cut in ABS or Kydex or Warbler uh, and then heat bent to the right size. And you'd have a just a perfectly functional looking, uh, looking hat crown hat. <laughs> uh, I also purchased, in case I felt like I needed it, uh, and I think I actually do, some of this gold, um, gold mylar tape. Uh, yeah, I think I'm, well, we'll see. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of like the I don't know. I'm debating back and forth whether or not I use the gold mylar or stick with the brass. And I kind of like the brass, but I'm also like a little bit. Okay. So today we're going to turn this anemic looking hat. Is that the front? There it is. There we go. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to, the first thing I'm going to do is do some edging. And I have picked up this gold uh, auto trim. Now, normally this is made for putting on your car doors to protect them from scrapes. Um, here, take a look at the cross section there. You see it's, right? So it's like a, it's open and you push it down over a, a metal border. Um, Wait till you see how much just adding the edging along all along the two sides of the main head ring and on these four uh, swoops, just adding the edging is going to radically change the look of this crown. Yeah, that's the that's the next thing that I'm doing, um, and it's going to be a little bit of a it's going to be a little bit of a thing. thing is, we would start it here on those four. Oh, okay, before I start putting on that detailing, I need to work out, this has to hold the orb and there has to be a cross on top. So just take a look at how much this legitimizes the look of my crown right away. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Wait till you see it with all the jewelry on it. Yeah, look at that, that's exactly what it is. Okay, so that's how high it wants to be. And I need to, I want a structure in there that can come on up. Within the structure of this crown, there's the frame of the crown itself, and then there's this orb, and there's this purple. See, I'm, of a, I'm, I'm kind of of the opinion that what I need to do is make a structure that sits on the inside of the crown, that connects the rim of the crown <clears throat> to the top so that this doesn't get all bent and also supports the crown, the orb and the cross on top. So that's the next thing for me to engineer. And then once I do that, I can make that a completely separate unit almost that literally, yeah, then I don't, yeah, I like this. Two separate pieces that I join later. That's exactly how I want to do this build. So to achieve this part of the build, the internal framework that holds up the, the purple, um, I'm gonna use my favorite, 
flat bar hardware store aluminum. Uh, this is anodized. It's one sixteenth of an inch thick by three quarter by 72. I buy a couple of these pieces every time I go to the hardware store. They're a few bucks a piece. Uh, I always have a stock of it here. It's a really good thing to have around. You can make all sorts of stuff stuff out of this. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> first and foremost, I need to. So I'm going to do this out of uh, uh, this aluminum and also some pop rivets. But first is the aluminum. Uh, so just some bending and bending to a shape. It's simply busy work. It's just takes a little time, that's all. Just gotta move yourself through the bend, attaching each part of it in turn. You gotta start from the same place, like I was just about to not do, about to change my mind about where I started, and that's that way lies madness. Doing this with coat hanger wire, I've said this before, do this with coat hanger wire. Take a coat hanger and just take a pair of pliers and spend an hour trying to make it perfectly straight. That is like one of the great techniques for learning how to bend metal. So what I'm ending up thinking is that, well, we'll see, we'll see. That still fits over my head. That's great, that's just what I wanted. Still fits over my head, but fits inside the crown. Okay, there's a lot of structure in this hat. Um, so, I have my outer frame, I have my inner frame, and I realized I needed this extra little springy bit to hold up the, uh, the purple velvet. But now I also need, I also need to make this sit on my head correctly, and that's the next step. Um, so I need to drill some, I think I'm going to do this entire crown without any sewing. I think that is one of my goals. Uh, let's see what I can do here. Um, I've got some, I think this might make exactly the right kind of, um, the right kind. Yeah. Right. See, like this, and what I'm gonna, what I'm thinking of doing is, yeah, coming up over there, like this. This is no face velvet. It is a four-way stretch. So it's got a kind of a nice, yeah. So it kind of wants to go like that. Actually, I don't know if I need, I think I have to do it without stretch. I have to do it without stretch. I need something thicker, hold on. All right, I'm gonna try it out of the felt. I think it'll give a more positive. Yeah. Right, let's see here. 
this just like this. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Yep. Okay. Yeah, hi. Hi, yeah, I look fancy. Uh, oh, right, this is the inside. Great. Oh, yeah, 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 right, right, right. Okay, so if I do this, No idea if this is working, but I'm trying to draw on my head through the green felt. I wonder if I'm gonna end up with a weird haircut line. Let's see, let's see if I drew a line all the way around. Oh, 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 front, front dead center. Uh, uh, uh. Always good to do. Hey, that looks like a pretty consistent line. I can put my head over here. So. Right, I like the idea of seeing green on the inside. If I'm gonna glue to this, I need to drill through this. I need to um, give it some places where glue can grab. So I'm gonna use a, uh, a step drill for this. Without a doubt, the most reliable way to drill right through thin sheet material. Wow. I think it will actually ah, come on. cooperate gluing through a hole in aluminum from one piece of cloth to the same piece of cloth. See? Yeah, see? Oh, you know what? Right, right, right. I also need to actively put this, this thing together. I could spend time making this stronger, but I really don't need to. It's just to hold up the velvet. Um, I now have holes around the internal perimeter. I'm gonna sand those so they're not, they don't have the, um, you know, that crap around them. I know it doesn't look like we're making a lot of progress, but, <clears throat> you know, in a build like this, you have to separate out between the engineering and the uh, aesthetic work. Okay. I gotta look in a mirror. Let me just go look in a mirror for a second. <laughs> okay, that was tough. It was tougher than I thought it would be. Um, I kept getting my hair caught up in this, but I have what I believe is, yeah. So, you know, when you see the Royals moving around during their Jubilees and stuff, you see them wearing this stuff, just realize that this is what's underneath. I know it's probably not quite this janky, but you know, there's still some engineering going on on the underside of that. This is one when you're hot gluing, yeah, the way I'm about to hot glue, like through a thing, into a thing, and then you trim it back, it's a very positive joint. Yes, I keep hot glue gun underneath my bed. You want to go fast because uh, the hot glue is going to cool against the aluminum very quickly. Nice. Um, it's always good to localize whatever bunching you're going to have into the middle, or sorry, into the center back. That tends to be where I try and localize it. I'm also working with this at a medium heat, not a super high heat, not a super low heat. Somewhere in the middle. Some Goldilocks version. Kermit the Frog here. Kermit the Frog here. Kermit the Frog here. 
I love that voice. Is it possible that Megan the Stallion is quoting Kermit the Frog? Is that possible? I mean, I'd like to know that Jim Henson's kindness travels that far and wide culturally. I mean, it does already, really. Yeah, I'm just leapfrogging the clothespins as I go, kind of like, like a bicycle tire. Oh, looks like I reached all the way around. Okay. So I'm going to put the clothes hangers back in the clothes hanger drawer. Yep, there we go. That fits. Nice. <clears throat> Every project renders this shop just an unholy mess. But that's kind of like, you know, kind of like how I work. Okay. Um, yeah, still got a lot of work to do. Um, Exacto blade. Oh, no, that one does not have a new blade. Um, got two exacto blades and a uh, single edge razor blade because actually that gives me a little bit more of a positive grab. So I'm just going to travel around the perimeter here, peeling up everything that's more than half an inch above the, the base. Feeling a nice positive grab, definitely from the uh, felt, which is nice. And, you know, getting it out of where it's going through those holes would be nearly impossible, which means that it's a really nice grab point for my ermine fur, which is the next thing I'm going to engineer on her. Or actually, that might be the last thing it's hard to say. Okay. So, great. There's that. Wonderful. Still have a bit of room to move, a little tolerance to explore. Um, okay, purple velvet. Purple velvet! Let's do the purple velvet next. Ooh, it is such a luxurious color. Ah, look at that. It's the, uh, what do you call that? Um, where it's really specular. This isn't crushed velvet, but boy, is it a specular velvet, right? It gives all these different beautiful values from really rich and dark to light and wow. Yeah, really nice. What do I cut out here? It feels like I cut out a circle. That's what it feels like I cut out, but it's not because I can't do all that. Can I do all that bunching? Mm. Mm. Let me cut out a circle. Let me trace out a circle and try it and I'll see what I can get. Actually, I could do that here. Cleared away a little bit. All right. Um. Ah, yeah. Is that what that is? It's about twenty. 20 with a little bit of room, maybe 20 and a half. And the same here, it's about the same. So it's about a 20 inch diameter circle. I'm gonna have to hustle to finish this by the end of today. That's becoming really clear to me and far out. I really didn't think this would take that long, but you know, I guess making the crown for the royal family, yeah, maybe it should take long. Oh, good cloth scissors are worth their weight in gold. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try uh, spray gluing a piece of this green felt to the back of the velvet and see if that gives me the rough structure that I want to hide the bracket that I've got here. Wow, the belt eats up that marker. I'm not going to glue all the way out to the edge because I don't want a harsh 
Yeah, I'm gonna try and hide all the evidence of the. I know, I, I know. I'm really chomping at the bit to see this thing kind of come together. Once I get, no, I still have another, mm, it's another like 45 minutes of cloth engineering before I'm, no, still. See what we got here. Yep, I uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that. That's that's actually kind of great. Okay, so let's see. The real moment of truth here is this. This has to get into there. Come on, come on. That's it. See, I've got this very tight tolerance between how the inner frame fits into the crown and that's actually by design. I want it to be tight. I like the idea of this all kind of locking together. Um, so I'm just going slowly so that I can kind of achieve that locking that I'm looking for. And since I've added the thickness of the felt to this, I'm, you know, yeah, it's just a thing. It's just going to take a little bit of fiddling. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. That was it. That was the cross. That was, that was I uh, went above the Rubicon. So I've lost some of the purple over here. But I have it over here. I kind of don't want to lose it anywhere. I can pull it back if I need to. Okay. That feels pretty authentic to me. Feels pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then. Uh, right, right. Um, I need, I need the plate there. I don't know what it looks like up there, but I need something. Yeah, I like that. That hides a lot of crimes. Okay, so then I put that over there and then uh, orb. Gold-leafed orb. And then the cross up top. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, baby. We're getting close to Wow, yeah, already, I, this is heavy. And I was going light. Hang on, is that the front? That is the front, okay, so yeah, I kind of like that, I like that. Okay, um, what do I need to do now? What would you do? What did you get from the monster? Right, I'm gonna do this and do this ermine wrap, but, and I'm gonna use this foam to do it, but I'm gonna slice it on the inside a little bit here. There's this funny moment in the crown 
when Queen Elizabeth tries the crown on for the first time and says, um, could I borrow this and um, practice with it? <laughs> and the courtier who's dealing with her says, mom, ma'am, uh, sorry, it rhymes with ham, not mom, uh, says, ma'am, <laughs> if it's not yours, I don't know whose it is. This is great, it's a great, great bit. Um, Okay, well, it's a, uh, so I think that what I can do here, oh, right, 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 I wanna try this. There we go. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Right? Okay, cool. So yeah, so that's gonna be the ermine. The ermine's gonna go around that guy. Yeah. And so, the... Right. Okay, so that's the ermine wraps around that. Um, And I guess I can, um, I guess I can add some hot glue down here. Yeah, so I'm gluing on the inside of the velvet to the aluminum. This is not a super pot, this is not a great glue, right? This is a thermally sensitive glue being attached to something that's thermally reactive, like metal, which will expand and contract. However, in this case, where it is providing a kind of a tiny amount of force across the aggregate of the whole thing, it's just fine. This will actually serve to hold this thing together pretty well. Um, there we go. Okay. So now you have your shit together. <laughs> okay, uh, let's get this. Let's get this ermine going. What is ermine? Uh, Short-tailed weasel or Bonaparte weasel. <laughs> Isn't Bonaparte enough of a weasel? Um, so it's a type of weasel. I guess it's rare and its fur is really nice. So they used it in royal things. Um, we're gonna use it in our royal thing. We want it to be, we're gonna use just enough to wrap around there. So I'm just gonna, yeah, am I, am I gonna do that? I'm just gonna cut this scarf in the middle. I mean, and look, the scarf was not expensive. It was just not. So yeah, we're just gonna do that. Okay, that one can go away. Um, I worked a lot with fur when I made my bear costume. Uh, and I learned about how to work with fur back then. Oh, that's a real machine stitch, a little brrr, every uh, every few inches to kind of provide some sort of stability between the two halves of the scarf. I'm destroying that stability now. There are consequences to falling in love with a murderous bastard. I don't know why Kilbill just showed up in my head, but it did. Oh my goodness. I find myself wondering if I don't want to actually just, yeah, go all the way to, oh, right. I don't want to cut to there. I want to cut, you know what? I'm going to cut after I do some gluing. Okay, here we go. Um, one of the things about gluing fur and foam with hot glue is it tends to take a while to dry because both foam and hot glue are very insulating. However, it should be fine. Okay, so let's, um. All right, excellent, excellent. So, yeah, I feel like, right, I feel like what I can do here 
I slice right up the side. I know I'm making lots of little fabric pennies. I remember, I remember about cutting with a exacto blade. I'm just making sure the best way to cut fur is from its backing with a super sharp blade. That is how you eliminate all the little, most of the little nernies. Okay, and then I'm gonna fold this over. Yeah, there we go. And let that one sit while I have a little bit more snackage. All right, now that's still setting. Okay, so I'm just gonna stop worrying about that. And now I'm gonna start to glue them. Time to start to put in the beads. The beads, the beads are everywhere. The beads are everywhere. So I have one, two, three, four, five things of beads. Hopefully that's enough to cover this whole business. We shall see. This is gonna be time-lapse because I got, this is gonna be so tedious. Now things are starting to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's starting to look like a real thing. I am decidedly taking a bit of a shortcut on uh, these beads because I'm gluing them in with this super thin crazy glue. Um, if I was making this as a theater prop, I'd probably choose a more durable technology. I'm not sure what. I might, I'm not exactly positive, but <laughs> Lest you think that theater props are built to a lighter standard than film props, but actors and actresses have unbelievable amounts of hidden Hulk-like strength when it comes to handling props. And I have welded steel things and handed them to tiny people and had them bring them back to me in two pieces, go, I don't know how this broke. And like, as an engineer, I haven't been able to figure out how it broke. Like, that's amazing to me. But uh, anyway, uh, my crown. It's coming, wow, <laughs> I was trying to keep this light. Um, not successfully. So the nice thing about wicking in the, the super thin crazy glue is it ends up providing like a little platform for each bead. Um, again, I'm gluing onto brass, which is less than ideal. If this whole thing was made out of plastic, it might actually be a little more solid. But now it's time to put in the jewels. Yeah, this is the fun part. This is the part that like you do the whole rest of the thing in order to be able to do. So uh, I've got some jewels to spread around. Also, I don't know if you knew this, but you can buy, you can buy costume jewelry diamonds in a roll. I, I don't know why I'm so excited about the idea that you can buy costume jewelry diamonds in a roll, but it thrills me. So that's gonna be the first thing that I do here is I'm gonna wrap some around the perimeter of the orb. Yeah, it's gonna be so sweet. Okay, all right. And here, I'm about to show you what, cra what thin crazy glue can do that almost nothing else can. Yeah! <laughs> oh, so cool. So cool. Okay, so now I gotta do a little bit of a, a little bit of a, Happy trail there. And the same one on the other side. This, I, I mean, I kind of, I guess I always kind of knew that you could buy this stuff in a roll like this, but it's so much fun to work with. Dude. So yeah, what I'm making is more of a, more akin to a film prop than a theater prop. Don't get me wrong, the film props also undergo abuse, but not nearly what theater props do. And every theater prop master watching this right now is like nodding their head saying, amen. Amen, brother. Uh, okay, now, uh, that's those are the big gestures. Now we need, in the middle of each of the crosses is a big jewel. And some are, yeah, you know what? Their jewels are all slightly different. I've got some square ones here. 
Got some little square ones. And now the big, the big center jewel of the queen's hat. <laughs> I love calling it a hat. Uh, the big center jewel is clear and it's square. And I think I have such a thing. Hang on. Ooh, I do. Okay. Um, so then the question is. You know, it's not sparkly enough. I want a sparklier. I, maybe I'm going too far. Maybe I'm worrying too much. All right, I wanna, yeah. Okay, I, I know I could lose my mind trying to get crazy exact with every single jewel, and that's not where I'm gonna go with this. Okay, I do like that. I do like that. So wait, but I wanna use, yeah, I wanna use the sparkly ones. Yes. Okay, so let's keep all the sparkly ones visible. You know, as I do this, I think about the, the royal jewelers in whatever it was, 14th, 15th, 16th century that put this crown together and thinking, Every little thing that I'm putting on was probably weeks of work by somebody. Every little, every single jewel, weeks, weeks and weeks. I mean, yeah, it's um, probably a Herculean, gigantic effort to get something like this finished, even now. I'm just distributing these, one of the things about the crown jewels is that they're, uh, they're, there's all sorts of jewels. They're all quite, they're all over the place. It's a real chock-a-block calico kind of jeweled thing. What I think is interesting is that the crowns are, are meant to display a kind of opulence, a specific kind of opulence that um, isn't necessarily present day opulence, right? It's like, it's like this old idea about what opulence is. While I am, you know, I've been going for exactitude up till now, uh, this is the point at which I kind of give it up and that's fine. I'm now going for a kind of the gesture of crownness, if you know what I mean. You know, I'm just, uh, I'm trying to seek that which is crown-like and obtain it in a period of time. Yeah. We were told to bling it on. It's been blung. Oh, oh, fleur de lis, fleur de lis. I forgot all about the fleur de lis. Yes, I got these guys. Okay, so what I wanna do with these is, these live here, right? And they have some jewels in them, but I don't necessarily need to put the jewels on. But what I do need to do is slice this on the bandsaw so it sits over that. So let me try, let me try one out that way. Oh, this is working exactly as I'd hoped. Oh, that's great. Oh, beauty. Beauty. Excellent. Okay, cool. Uh, Dude, <laughs> look at that, that looks awesome. Okay, so I'm gonna do these other two. Everything on this I found on Amazon and all the links are in the comments below. So those of you whose high school theater programs are obsessed with the crown, now you have the I'm giving you the schooling. I don't know why I'm yelling. Uh, to make this, to make the, the actual crown. Okay, so I want to glue those guys in. 
Uh, yeah. All my all my measurements I can see are a little spongy here, but again, this is for the aggregate display of opulence, not for. Uh, yeah, I know. I go back and forth between like crazy detail and half-assing, and I know that sometimes some of you get annoyed about that, but that's just kind of my pacing, you know. That's sort of where I'm at. Um, it's definitely a delicate device, that's for sure. Uh, okay, I think I'm mostly jeweled up. The question is, am I going to put any jewels on the um, fleur-de-lis? And the answer is, sure, why not? Uh, do I have any little tiny jewelry jewels? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of that. Well, you know what? I think I could huck with these. Yeah, I'm on. I think just two. I know the, 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 the actual fleur de -lis have much more jewels on them, but I do do that. Eh, there's not a really natural place for them to stick. So I am just going to, yeah. I'm doing an orange one up top on each one. When you have irregular surfaces, that means sometimes it makes a lot of sense to use hot glue. <laughs> This is fantastic. I'm so happy about this thing. Okay. Um, I am, I'm really close. I'm really close. That also, that also helped it tie it together a little bit. Oh, right, yeah, I, I'm not done until I put the ermine on it. All right. Where's my head? Here I am. Ho, 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 hey. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just getting it to, getting it to appreciate the bend. I wanted to appreciate it. But put it in a little box. All right. Uh, great. Let's um get another thing of hot glue in there. Because again, fur and foam. They just want to insulate everything. <laughs> this is great. And the next big project will be a scepter. I, nah, I mean, the next big project in relation to royal crown jewels, let's say. Damn, this, is, this has been really, really fun to get to know. To get to know this crown. Oh, yeah, it really is like you got to walk with your head just totally straight. Ha! I have to look at a mirror. That's not a mirror. Hold on. Oh, I forgot I have a phone right here and I can just take a look at it. <laughs> here we go. Dude. Hmm. I think it makes me look thinner. <laughs> I had a social studies teacher who once said, well, this queen was known for being very lovely, but if you're that rich and you don't, he said, if you're, if you have that much money and you're not lovely, you're an idiot. That's good teaching. That's an interesting perspective. Oh, oh, wow. My phone's going wider. Wow. It's kind of brilliant. Oh, all right. Shout out to Paul Taswell and the incredible costume team at Hamilton 
for providing the original inspiration for this. Um, I got to see the incomparable Jonathan Groff do his King George III on stage during the original production of Hamilton. It was amazing. And then when I visited the behind the scenes backstage of the set of Hamilton here in San Francisco, I got to see their King Crown. Uh, and I, I, I thought mine would be lighter. I thought I'd be able to make mine lighter, but the fact is, is that it's just, it's heavy. To be honest, um, I built this yesterday and today, and to just give you some context about the world, um, last night was the night that um, a crazy mob stormed the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. And it, of course, landed on me that there's irony to be making a monarchic crown during this bizarro period of our democracy. Um, I don't have anything more to say about it than just that. That context was there while I was making this. I will always be thinking about that. I am, I'm very pleased. Oh yeah, no, again, all the links for almost everything in here is in the, uh, is in the comments below. I'd love to see the crowns you make. You don't even have to make a crown based on this look at all. No, no, no. I decided to start by following one, but I also did that because I kind of wanted to wrap my hands around the idea of a crown because I'd eventually like to make one myself. Uh, I'd like to design and make one. Yeah. All right. There you have all of my ambitions. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. It has been spectacular. I hope you like the new camera we've been shooting it on. Uh, and I even shot this one with two cameras, two phones. That's it, two phones. Everything is still on the phone here at Tested. Uh, but it's been a delight to have you in the shop this week for this two day, one day build. And I will see you next time. Peace out.